Uh, and I definitely need God's help. I'm going to take it very old school tonight. I told Sister Shirley before church, I said, I believe tonight we're going to think and step back in time about 50 years. But it's all right because yes. we need to hear this. I enjoy, thank you, Brother Wallace, and I enjoy teaching that Sunday school lesson. It uh, meant a lot. And uh, it, it's something that means a lot to us, to the church. And so, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, and verse number 11. Amen. Isaiah, chapter 5, and verse number 11. I'm going to attempt tonight to preach to you what God has laid on my heart. Amen. So, I do cover your prayers tonight. Isaiah chapter number 5, amen, beginning with verse number 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. And I just want to say right there that that's why we should all sleep in. I have a Bible for that. I just read it to you. Everybody like that scripture? I love it. To tell your bosses that. Yeah. The Bible says, Woe unto them that rise up early. That they may, oh, there's something attached to it. Okay, here we go. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. There's an exclamation mark. And the harp and the vial and tabret and pipe and wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because, watch, they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Verse 14, verse of focus. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp, he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight from this thought, this question, if you will. What is it about hell? Amen. What is it about hell? If you have your Bibles, please lift them up. Amen. Let's pray right now. Jesus, we love you. We love you for the power of your spirit. God, we thank you for the wonderful touch of God that we feel in this house tonight. God, I pray that you would move in this congregation. I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that your word would go forth and it would touch lives and change lives tonight. God, that we would realize the seriousness of living for you. Church congregation were called upon 
to vote. They voted for the second candidate. When they were asked why, the answer was, the first one spoke as if we were glad that people were going to hell, while the second one seemed sorry for it. I'm preaching to you about hell tonight because it saddens me that so many people, so many good people, yes. are on their way to hell and they don't even realize it. Yes. Or maybe even seem to care. Yes. And where have we gone wrong? Or where have we lost touch, if you will? When we cannot express the importance of staying out of hell at any cost. Not as gloom and doom preaching, but as awareness preaching. As I mentioned in the Sunday school lesson, there are those in the religious world that would like to erase the idea of hell all together. But I believe that there are those who even sit in apostolic pews yes. that believe that they are okay Come on, yeah. in their hearts right. when there are so many things in their lives that are left undone. Right. And as we pastors watch people, if you will, as they backslide, it makes us wonder, what is it about hell? What makes people want to go there or just act as if they don't care if they do? Amen. We can worship, we can sing, we can pray, we can give, pay our time, all of the extras, all the things that are required, if you will. But when the man of God begins to talk to you about what you need to do or to stop doing to stay out of hell, there are people that get offended. Yes. Right. Maybe there's even people that take on the not me attitude and with all the while your preconceived ideas and your I know how to live for God better than anybody concepts are failing you. I I've got to tell you tonight that you cannot pretend, even pretend to be a child of God and only believe part of the Bible.
You think God wants to see you go to hell? Well, guess what? He doesn't. The Lord says, I want you to turn yourselves and live. Folks, I don't know about you. We kind of go back to that choice thing. But we've all got a choice to make. And you got to make the right decision. I'm either going to live for God and I'm going to go to heaven. Or I'm going to play around, monkey around, not get serious and go to hell. Because I'm going to tell you, there's nobody in the middle. There's nobody half in and half out. There's nobody wishy-washy that's going to make it to heaven. But if you want to go to heaven, you have to live as if that is where you want to go. The question is, why, why will he die? I've looked on the faces of many people through the years and I've asked the question. Why, Brother Emmett, do they want to go to hell? Brother Roney, they never said they want to go to hell. You don't have to say it with your lips. Amen. You can say it with your life. Amen. Because right. Amen. if we don't live according to the word of God, if we don't obey God, if we make mistake after mistake after mistake, and we, we sin and we repent not, we will go to hell. It's our choice. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your choice. Your choice. It's plain and simple. God does not take pleasure in sending someone or seeing someone choose right. hell. Amen. He takes no pleasure in seeing someone reject heaven or reject his teachings concerning a place called hell. Some people who believe in the passages of the Bible about heaven utterly reject the references to hell. There was a famous lawyer and an atheist in the latter part of the 19th century who once delivered uh, an incredible lecture on hell. And, and he was delivering it against hell, if you will. And he called it, he said, hell is the scarecrow of religion. He said, hell is the scarecrow of religion. And he told his audience that hell uh, was very unscientific and how intelligent that there was no such place. And after his lecture, there was a man, a lost man, a well-known uh, alcoholic in the town that came up to him and told him, he said, I really enjoyed your lecture on hell. He said, I like what you had to say about it. He said, but I want you to be sure about what you're saying because I'm depending on you. And when I think about the enormous responsibility that we as a church have. God does not expect us to go around, uh, you know, standing in the back of our uh, pickup trucks with a, a megaphone telling everybody, repent or perish, repent or burn in hell. That is not what God is asking us to do. But folks, there's a serious problem when we in the church begin to live as if there is no such place called hell. I want to tell you folks, if I don't have a desire to go to heaven,
remember when I was a teenager, my pastor taught probably one of the most stirring messages on hell that I've ever heard. Nobody can preach on hell like David Baker. Right, that right? He could put, you talk about hellfire and brimstone. And, and you could not, I don't care who you were, if you sit there and didn't move, didn't weep, didn't fidget, or, or bring your hands, there was something you was cold as ice. It got to me. Knowing that for all eternity, Never dying, weeping, gnashing of teeth. So dark, you know that you're not alone because there's millions in hell with you. Yes. However, you feel alone because you're without God. Yeah. Do you understand what it means? Amen. That you will never get a second chance never. to get out of hell. Never. Once you're in it, you're in it. Why, 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 why don't we, we, we've got reminders from everything else in life. But we don't have reminders to stop doing things that would send us to heaven. After all, who would, re, who would refuse the ultimate pleasures of life? Oh yeah, hell's a joy ride. The journey there is a joy ride. The journey to hell, you'll experience pleasure like you've never known. But then when you get there, how quickly you forget about the journey. When you get there, how quickly you forget. There's nothing like going on a long trip only to show up to the place you've been looking so forward to, to being at and realizing that it's a dump. That ever happened to anybody? Yes. You're driving along, it's beautiful scenery. You're listening to your favorite songs. The kids are in the back being perfectly quiet. I mean, you are enjoying the ride. That just happened to us. We drive out, the kids wasn't saying a word. They were preoccupied. And I was on the phone talking to one of my friends and we were just having a good old time. Pulled over and got something to eat. Great, great journey, great trip. We were so anxious and we got to where we were going and when we opened the door, it was a dump. <laughs> the mold hit you in the face. You could smell the mildew. The furniture was wet. Oh. And they turned the ceiling fan on high speed hoping to dry out before we got there. My wife walked over and touched the chair. She said, feel this chair. I touched the chair. Colin, has got bad allergies. He's, all, he's walking around going, damn, this place will not work. This place is not going to work. Man, it's terrible. He says, how did you preach to you on hell tonight? I thought, oh, great. All this way. And here we are. Not what I expected. I'll tell you something. No matter how much sin you get involved in, come on, you're going to find out yes. it is not what you expected. Right. 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 There is nothing, you listen to me, there's nothing in this world that you should ever sell out for. Every young person in this place, you know what you need to do? You need to worship God every night with every ounce of energy come that on. you have. Because if the time ever comes that you stand before God and God Miss heaven. Oh, Brother 
Brother Rowan. You don't understand God like I do. God will let you do this. God will let you do that. Can I remind you that there were ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, and the ones that did not enter in, it wasn't because they didn't have any oil, it's because they didn't have enough oil. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to spend my Christian journey trying to figure out just how much is enough. Amen. I want to be full. Right. To the brink. I want to make sure that I have enough. I want to worship to make sure I have enough. I want to give to make sure that I have enough. Folks, I am so, you don't know how pleased I am that the, that the, the, the uh, inaugural or the launch of the Love My Church program, you all Swallow them up. I don't know if there's any left out there or not. There might be three left out there. If you don't have one, grab one. If you grab one that was small and you want another blessing, grab another one. I know it's the first time. I know it. But the reason why that we love it is because we want to be full of it. I want to be full of everything I can do for God. I can't worship enough. I can't give enough. I can't pray enough. I can't read the word. I'm fast enough. You hear me? I can't. Amos 9 and 2 Though they dig into hell Then shall my hand take them Though they climb up to heaven Then will I bring them down Four times In the word Sheol which is the Hebrew word For hell The grave and the place of the dead Is described Listen as the farthest Point from heaven Are you hearing me? The reason why hell doesn't settle in on most people, Brother Edmund, is because they've never been there. Anybody ever had the most horrible experience in your life happen to you and you say, I don't care, I'm not doing that again? What do you say? I never want to go through that again. There are things in your life, mistakes that you've made, that you can say, I never want to go through that again. But the problem is, nobody here has ever really been to hell. Come on. Shame on us when we say, well, I've been to hell and back. You've not been to hell and back. Because if you've never been to hell, you ain't coming back. Amen. You've been to a black a bad place.
for Sheol. In the Old Testament, there was a distinction of a place that referred to the exact opposite of Abraham's bosom. If you were not going to heaven, you were most certainly going to hell. I don't care if anybody tells you that hell's not a real place. You may not go to heaven, but you may just go to purgatory. Or you may go someplace in between. Folks, you listen to me. There is no such place as in between. If you don't go to heaven, you most certainly will go to hell. So when I look at when I look at this place, one place is referenced as a garbage dump. Garbage heap. They perform child sacrifices there. And it talks about it in 2 Kings 23 that no man might take his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of moment. It's a real place. And this place, this place of eternity. Every believer should believe in hell. Yes. Everybody here tonight should believe in hell. Yes. And if the teaching and preachings of hell bore you to tears, then you don't have a fear of going there. If the teaching of hell and the preaching of hell doesn't do something, listen, after this word tonight, I don't care if I do somersaults down this aisle. After this word tonight, everybody in this place should find a place on their knees and say, God, help me make sure that I don't go to hell. People give time and money and talents and attention to go to hell. Billions of dollars are spent going to hell. Countless hours are spent going to hell. And folks, sometimes I wonder if we even realize what's in our midst and we don't, we don't pay close attention to it. During, I believe it was the, the, the Franco-German War, there was a man that two bombshells had, had landed in his front yard and they did not detonate. And so he went outside after the fighting had calmed. He went outside and he saw these shells laying in his front yard. Well, instead of contacting the military or, or whoever and saying, come get these things off my front yard, he carried them. He and his family carried those shells into his house. And he took those shells and he propped them up and he placed them on either side of his fireplace. And he cleaned them and polished them off. He invited a friend over, come and see what I've got in my house. His friend, having served in the military, knew about these shells. And he looked them over. And he said, man, you have no idea what you're doing. These shells are still alive. You've got to get them out of your house right now. Or you or your whole family could die. Mm -hmm. Folks, we have to have an even greater appreciation for being saved than that man carrying loaded shells in by his fireplace. I don't care, listen to me, you may not like what I'm about to say, but it's the truth. But I'm going to tell you something, if your family's watching it and it could send them to hell, you better go home and get it out of your house. If your family's reading it, if they're on the website, whatever it is that they're engaged in that might send them to hell, you can never be too careful. Guys, you might think your mom and dad are the meanest people on the planet. Come on. They just don't want to see you go to hell. That's right. That's true. That's true. Why can't you be cool like everybody else? I don't want, listen, I'm just going to tell you right now. I hope my children never ask me. I'm going to tell them right now. Don't ever ask me to be cool like every other parent because I don't want to be cool. I want to make sure that my boys go to heaven. I want to make sure that your kids go to heaven. I want to make sure that you go there. That's right. I'll definitely, brother, I'll sacrifice being cool. Yes. To make it to heaven. Or to ensure, to help ensure that my family goes there. Oh, I've, I've laid awake at night. And I've thought about my family, stuff that I've not even told my wife about. And I'm going to close here in just a minute. But stuff that I've never even told my wife about. The thought of my kids not serving the Lord. Yeah. I can't. It's a sobering thought. And I know that it's their choice. But they're six years old. And we have conversations about hell. We have conversations about that. They know that hell is a real place and they don't want to go there. And I want them to keep that in their minds. But 
It's got to be more than that. We've got to start showing Brother Barry. We've got to start teaching them that there is a lifestyle that you can lead that will send you straight to hell if you're not careful. That's right. That's right. The world wants to erase it, cover it up, and make it like everybody's going to heaven. God is so awesome. God is so wonderful. And we know that He is. But I'm going to tell you something. A homosexual lifestyle will send you to hell. Fornication before you're married. Yes. 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 Right. Right. Having sex before you get married yes. will send you straight to hell. Yes. Yes. Right. We didn't. We didn't really have sex. We just played around a little bit. It will send you straight to hell. No girl, no boy in this world is worth going to hell. Amen. No. Well, they were in the church. Hey, sometimes those are the worst. Yes. Can I just be real right yes. now? Sometimes those are the worst. If she or he wants to do stuff that you know you shouldn't be doing, run from them. Yes. I don't care how cool they are. I don't care how good looking they are. I don't care what their mom and daddy is. I don't care who their mom and daddy is. You run far away from them. Yeah, right. Because they will take you straight yes. to hell. And it's a real place that is reserved for hypocrites, for sinners, for fornicators. We read it today. Idolaters. Liars, murderers. And when you read that list, you sit on this view and you think, that's not me. That's, I'm not any one of those. But how easily you can become any one of those. Right. I'm burdened tonight because I want our church to have an appreciation of heaven. But I want our church to have a fear of going to heaven. I don't want it to ever be said we never talk about that here. I don't want to preach it every week. But if that's what it takes for some of you to start doing right, for some of us to get it together, and I'm just going to be real pastoral right here and say I'm going to stop watching it. I'm going to start looking, stop looking at it. I'm going to stop texting it. I'm going to start stop hanging out with them. I'm going to stop doing the things and going to places I shouldn't be going. I'm going to start paying my tithe when I know I should. I'm going to stop talking about this one and talking about that one. And don't look at me as if, brother, brother, that doesn't go on here. You don't know what goes on. You've got to start living right and stop pretending that all is okay great thing about hell awareness preaching is that you cannot justifiably talk about hell awareness preaching unless you talk about heaven awareness preaching. Yeah, right. I'm not going to preach about hell when I do not tell you about heaven. Right. When I do not tell you that there is a place that is the complete opposite of hell. That there is a place that is more than just what your mom and daddy sing about, more than what your grandpa or your grandma sing about. It's more than what I preach about here. It is way more than you can ever imagine. It is the place that you want to go. It is the place that you want to focus on and that you want to feast your eyes on and to know that you don't have to go to hell. You don't have to make the choice to go there. You can choose to go to heaven. I don't care what you've done. If you've already fornicated, if you've already messed up, if you've already
to see Jesus. You talk about streets of gold all day long. You talk about mansions all day long. You try to figure out how many jewels are going to be on the wall or how many stones. You try to talk about gates of pearl. You try to talk about this. The reason why I want you to knock yourself out. But for me, there's one person I want to see. Yes. There's one person I want to see when I get to heaven. And I want to know that my family's there with me. I want to see Jesus. If I make it to heaven, Jesus, Jesus, if you make it to heaven, all the questions you have will be answered. Anything you want to ask Jesus, you go right ahead. But I have a feeling you're going to know. I have a feeling you're going to know. And all the times that He reached in and saved you when He could have let you die. Yeah. It was all to get you to heaven. That means something to me. Amen. We are a church that believes in heaven. Amen. We are a church that believes that there is a hell. We are a church that will preach and practice how to get to heaven. But we will also preach and practice how to avoid going to hell. Yes. Every preacher in this church, I want them to preach about heaven. But I want you to preach about hell. I want you to talk about what it would be like if you miss it. I want there to be an awareness. I want our young people to know that there is a place. Listen, I see it. I go all these places and I hear about it. I'm going to tell you something. I don't hear a lot of hell preaching. No. I don't. No. I don't hear it. And, and I'm I'm one that has started to kind of fall in that vein of trying to preach things that, you know, we're, we're reaching, 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 that's what we need to do. But we need to understand that if we're reaching for the world on our own or dying lost on the pew, we're not doing right. Right. And so, there's nothing about it that makes me want to go there. Amen. There's nothing about it that picture of the flames of fire, nobody has any idea what that looks like. I know it's eternal darkness. I know it's pain and suffering. The Bible says there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is a consciousness to know that you have made the wrong choice and that all of eternity you've got to think about the decision that you made. And it's constant suffering and it's constant, it's your memory will haunt you when you have the choice. Come to an altar and get right. And then you're too busy. Everybody close your eyes if you do. You're too busy thinking about, man, I wish Brother Norman would get on with it so we could go home. I got something I got to do. Too busy playing it off. I'm going to tell you, there's people here tonight. I'm just going to tell you as your pastor, you need a good praying through to the Holy Ghost. Young and old. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want you to hear me tonight. Because I want to say this as your pastor tonight. With as much pastoral authority that I can muster up to deliver to you in the last few moments of this message. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I don't want anybody trying to figure out who it is. Don't want anybody here tonight thinking it's somebody else. But you hear me when I tell you. Young and old. There are people here tonight that I am deeply concerned about. I'm telling you that as your pastor. Your faces have come.
promise you that. I've seen it. I've heard it. I'm telling you right now, young and old, God is giving you an opportunity to make things right with Him. Tomorrow is not promised. You've been blessed with today. You've been blessed with right now. Don't think of it's not me. I'm, I spoke in tongues just about 10 minutes ago. I, I'm okay. Don't think that. There's attitudes. There's ways of trains of thought. There's things that you are doing. There's things that you have been hiding. There's things in your heart that God is not pleased with. And God wants you to get it right. I want you to get it right. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I fear for your soul. I fear. This altar's open. And anybody that wants to make sure that they stay out of hell, you need to come. You need to come. You need to get on your knees and you need to say, God, help me to make sure I'm right. 